Hey guys, welcome back to our project. So yesterday I noticed a small issue that actually affected styling in our code base. So as it turns out, it was a dollar sign that broke the CSS for all of our spinners. So you wouldn't notice it if you have a single spinner on the web page, but if you have multiple spinners at the same time, you would see that they all overlap on top of each other. So I was probably thinking of template literal at the time, but all I had to do was to remove the dollar sign from there. And in fact, I also updated some of the examples here. So now I'm gonna show you really quickly. So if we go to examples, in the CDN example, I'm now rendering all the three spitters. I'm doing the same thing in the CRA project as well. And of course, for the SSR, I also updated the code to basically display all the three spinners. Now, actually, let's do a quick test. So I'm going to go to examples slash CDN. So I'm going to run npm run serve. And when I open the link, you're going to see that we have all these spinners on the left hand side. Now, let's stop it. Let's go to create react app. I'm going to do yarn start. So as you can see, same thing. And let's look at SSR. Hopefully it's gonna work as well. So let's do npm start and we should see the same output as well. And as you can see, we do. In fact, even with SSR, we now get all the three spinners with the styling properly applied. All right, so I think one of the reasons that this issue actually happens is because we don't have any development environment in our project. In fact, you saw it firsthand with this issue that we just ran into. So it would be nice if we could set up some kind of a development workflow in this project. Maybe not necessarily a development server, but maybe some sort of a prototyping environment where we can basically develop our UI components and also see the output. And of course, besides the development environment, we also need a way to demo our project in order to be able to show what types of components our API exposes. And so there is a tool that can solve both of those problems. And this tool is known as Storybook. So Storybook is, as it says on the official website, is essentially a UI development environment. It allows you to quickly prototype components using what's known as stories. Now, we could set this library up for React, for Angular, for Vue, just about any library. So in this case, I'm going to go to the quick story start guide. Let's go to storybook for react. I'm going to go with the manual setup. So what we need to do is we need to install a few dependencies. So let's copy all of them. So storybook react. Besides that, we need to install react itself as well as react dom. Let's also have Babel loader for webpack. Now let's install all of those. All right. So once that's done, let's go back. I'm going to add a new script to our package JSON. This one is going to be storybook and we're going to invoke start storybook on port 9001 and we're going to use a config which we have to create now in this case instead of doing period storybook i'm actually just going to do a storybook so this will be a folder at the root of our project so let's do that now we have to create a configuration file so it's going to be config.js so let's just copy the code from the example so let's do config.js. I'm going to paste in the code. Let's save it. It's going to be predefined. I'm just going to remove the comment. And now with that, we can create a directory called stories. So let's do that. So this will be a new folder called stories. And from then on, we can create a file called index.js. So this is where we're going to put our stories. So let's go ahead and copy some of the examples in here. So we'll go back in here. Let's paste them in. Let's save it and let's go back through the terminal. I'm going to try doing npm run storybook. So this is going to spin up a development server using Webpack. So let's see if it worked. And now we get a button and the button with emoji. So it looks like it worked. And now instead of doing stories for a button, we could do stories for every single component. So for example, let's say ellipses, a ring. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do stories of spinners instead. And we'll just simply do one for each. So there's going to be one for ellipses. Let's also add one for a ring. We'll put in a function as well. So let's actually import our components. So we're going to need to go to source. And from then on in the source directory, we have the index.js file. So we should be able to import from there. So we're going to import ellipses, ring, and ripple. And now we're going to put all of those components inside. So let's have a demo for each one of them. And the last one, I'm going to add ripple, pass any callback with a component like this. So now we can actually get rid of the button. So let's save the file. And now if I go back, you can see that we get the ellipses, the ring and the ripple components. Now there's a few issues over here that I like to work on. So we are able to display the components, but I like to also customize the title. So instead of storybook, I'd like to display the title of our library and also the link itself. So if you click on that button, I wanted to go to our repository. So let's see if we can customize the behavior of that button. So now if we go back to storybook and if we go back up, we can go to using add-ons section on the left. So now what we want to do is we want to customize the title and also some of the other options as well. So for that, we're gonna to need to install storybook add-on options. So let me go back, I'm gonna install that dependency as well. So let's install it. And now in order to be able to use it, we're gonna to need to create a file 
called addons.js. So this is where we're going to put an import from that module slash register. So that's the only thing we have to do. Now, by the way, these files are going to be resolved by Storybook. So Storybook is going to know to grab the configuration from the config.js file because this is the one that we've specified using the dash C option. So now if we want to add the config, I'm just going to copy this markup. So let me go back to the config file. So I'll paste it in over here. Let me grab this block. I'll put it in just before the configure call. So the title, we're going to set it to React CSS Spinners. I'm also going to modify the URL. So the URL is something that we can hard code. So for instance, we already have a URL to our repository. But the other thing we could also do is we could also import from package.json to make it dynamic. So let's do import package JSON. We're going to go one level up and we'll just import the package JSON file. So once we do, the contents of package JSON file will be available as a JavaScript object. So what we can do for the URL is we could put package JSON dot, let's see, we have a repository field. So we could do dot repository dot URL like that. So now all of the other options I'm good with except the show add on option. So I'm going to do show add on panel set to false. So that way we can get rid of the bottom panel over here. So now let's save the file. And now the add decorator option is going to come from storybook slash react. So now this URL will point to our repository, which is going to be this field over here. Now the only thing is I'm going to remove git plus from there just so that we get a proper HTTPS link. So now let's go back to the terminal. I'm going to do npm run storybook. And from then on, as you can see, we get a customized button that says react CSS spinners. If I click on it, it's going to bring us to the repository. And now we also got rid of the bottom panel as well. Now the only thing besides that that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the spinners because I don't think it looks that well. So currently it's a shade of beige. So I'm going to actually change it to let's have a black color instead and replace all occurrences. So let's save it. And if I go back, it should update and it does. All right. So now I'm going to go back to package JSON. So we have a command to set up a dev server with storybook. I'm also going to add one to build storybook. So let's do storybook colon build. And this one is going to call build storybook binary and node modules. And we have to provide the dash C option to the storybook folder like this. So now if we go back to the terminal, let's clear it out and let's do npm run storybook colon build. So this is going to build a storybook dash static directory. And this one we can actually add to get ignore as well. So let's do storybook dash static. And this way we're not going to commit it to a repo accidentally. I'm also going to add it to eslint ignore as well and also pretty or ignore too. So let's add it there as well like this. So let's see if we got any issues. Now it looks like it built. So now to serve it up really quickly, we could do npx serve storybook dash static and this should start a local server. So let's try it out. And as you can see, we get all the three spinners and I can also go to the repo and it looks like it works. So from there, let's do a git status. So let's add all these files. I'm going to do a commit add storybook and let's do a push and we're done.